All right, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, it is time. Yes, indeed. Don't you feel fortunate? You should feel fortunate. If you don't, close your eyes, take a deep breath, and uh, realize just how fortunate you are to have the uh, the sounds ever so gently dripping into your ear holes. It is time for another live. Well, it's live if you're watching now. If, if you're doing it later, you know the drill. Student of the Gun Radio, brought to you by the letter M. Today's show is brought to you by the letter M. And for Marty, for Marty <laughs> That's we, right. <laughs> we have Marty, also known as Left Hand from Talking Lead. We have Jared. We have Zachary. Oh, man. Marty wants to talk about Alec Baldwin. We're going to talk about bullet points and colors and being dangerous on demand and all kinds of stuff on today's super cool, fantastic episode. So buckle up, hippie. Welcome to Student of the Gun Radio, planting freedom seeds since 2013. Here we don't just talk about guns and gear, we also discuss current events and politics. Because guns are politics. Now, sit back, relax, and allow today's episode to drip ever so gently into your ear. Please welcome your co-hosts, founder of Mastermind Media and Consulting Group, Jared Martin, and the shipping ogre, Zach Martin. Now, give it up for your beloved host, the Pimp Hand of America, Professor Paul Markle. Yes, indeed. And for all of you out there in the Discord audience, all of you are you're creeping on us uh, in the Discord, <laughs> watching live. Congratulations to you! And uh, if you're listening to this sometime in the days of future past, uh, you're saying to yourself, "Well, I I could have been there. Could I have been there? Yeah. Could they have been What's there, Jared? Profile? What's up with the profile on the camera? Should oh." I go pro- I mean, that's just the way the the situation. It's situational. It's just the way the situation happens to be playing out right now. (laughs) Okay. So every once in a while, I'll do this, and then you'll be happy because you can see my whole face. Like you're talking to me now. Now You're talking to me. Yeah. Now, but actually, on my screen, it looks like I'm talking. Like it's like the Brady Bunch thing where they're all on screens and they turn and they look at each other and they look up and they look down and they look sideways and they're like, that's right. Yeah. They waved who was on the bottom. It was like, Alice was waving to Carol <laughs> on, on the top and they're like, yeah. So, but anyway, Oh man, what was I about to say? I was about to say that you could get to discord by going to student of the gun.com slash discord. That's student of the gun.com slash discord. Now, before we get into, uh, you guys want to do the Alec Baldwin update right now? We could. Uh, Q, yeah. we're, if you're in the Discord and you have a question, type it in. The it's boys just... will monitor it. All right. Uh, Alec Baldwin. Da, 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 da. Jared, did you just pull this up? Yeah, Jared just pulled up the story. It's from dailymail.co.uk.mousa. Because the U- UK, UK knows more about us than we do. <laughs> It's a shame sometimes we have to I go think, overseas. I think they're, yeah. Overseas to get our news. No. I was going to say, I think that they're just more willing to publish what they know than the own than our own people in the country. Well, because they don't sense. get a, the, the Daily Mail.co.uk doesn't get daily phone calls from the White House telling them uh, what they should and should not talk about. Get their, their daily, daily news blast from yeah. the White House. Well, I mean, that's the crazy thing is, so the redheaded Chucky doll liar let the cat out of the box. They're like, oh, yeah, we're in uh, continuous discussions with Facebook and uh, about, you know, uh, what did she say? <laughs> what? Redheaded Chucky doll. <laughs> yeah, the redheaded Chucky doll that used to be the, the spokes liar for Biden. And then she just got burned out. But, uh, yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, we're, we talk to the Facebook every day about troubling content and and what content is troubling and bothers us and then the uh the frizzy haired uh, lonely doll there's a new the, the, so the new one is the one that you can't sell in vernal walmart so that the new spokes liar uh for uh biden they got her uh at a clearance in the clearance aisle at walmart so they went and got her from the clearance aisle at walmart and she said that's not true we never we would never tell Never. them what to say and what not to say and what to censor and what not to censor. like uh well that's funny it's too late what? you already admitted that you do and zuckerberg said yeah the fbi said don't talk about that story so we didn't well it's not like the 
You know, like the president's in charge of the executive branch of government. He has no influence over them whatsoever. Yeah. I, what? Not, not whatsoever. What about those documents they found in his garage? There was no, no raid on his house. No. Oh, my gosh. Was, That's... It, didn't they refuse to return them, too? Wasn't that a thing? Oh, no, well, see, the... The latest news is they had to admit that the documents they got from Trump's house had been declassified. That he, because this, oh, the chief executive, that. they had, it was yesterday. They, the, well, and they did it over the weekend so nobody, because nobody pays attention on the weekend. They're like, yeah, we told you. You told me when? Oh, Saturday night. Yeah, because the president can classify or declassify things as he see. Like right as now, you could say, um, I, this is now declassified. Boom. It's declassified. And they could tell you that they could give you the inside on the Kennedy assassination. Remember when they they were teasing us with that? Maybe that's what Biden did. He didn't even remember where they were. He doesn't know what day it is. Well, he also wasn't the president when they were stored there either. No, he wasn't the president. So he he was a private citizen when those were in his garage when he took them. But whatever. So let's let's talk about the Russ thing and from Daily Mail. Trump Dalton planted those there. Yeah. So Russ Crew. Russ Crew. Russ Crew. Um, it's loading on my end. Sorry. Loading. Russ cast and crew could be called to testify against Alec Baldwin, including director Joel Souza, who was injured in the shooting. Several members of the Russ cast and crew may be called to testify against Alec Baldwin as he faces involuntary manslaughter charges. Now, was it Zach earlier? We were talking a little bit about this off air. Was it you, Zach, who said something about you think he kind of shot himself in the foot when he said that he didn't pull the trigger, the gun just went off? Yeah. Yeah, that was me. For lack of a better term, yeah, he shot himself in the foot. because he. he got, and there might have been an argument of like, well, I mean, I was on a set. It was supposed to be a prop, blah, blah, blah. But he's like, no, I didn't even pull the trigger. Then he's lying. I was I just that- holding it, and it went off. Really? So then we, we got a little bit into a discussion. And by the way, I think shot himself in the foot is probably the best term that you could find for this, this one. But um, we got into a little discussion where Marty had said something about, uh, do you remember what you said, Marty? Yeah, I was like, well, don't they modify those wheel guns to where you don't necessarily have to pull the trigger where you can just fan them with the, uh, the trigger? Yeah, so I wanted to make sure we got this on the public episode so that we can have that discussion with uh with dad and in that way that people that are listening that may be new to the world will know how these things work okay so this is the 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 crazy thing to me as somebody who's been shooting single action army revolvers for 20 30 years uh is when, when this first came out what's crazy all right the the 1873 you see we used to we used to name the guns by the year that they were adopted like the, so you could do so you could really like the easy, 1911 yeah you can math that huh. really easy um so the with the patents actually the original patent uh, i've got a, a colt single action army that was built on the original patents and they engraved the patent dates into the receiver and one of them is 1871 and another one's 1872 but 1873 is when the u.s army decided to adopt and purchase the 45 Colt single action revolver. And it's an 1873 SAA. And what 1873 SAA stands for is single action army. Okay. And how it works, single action uh, for all you kids out in the audience, I'm going to give you a piece of knowledge. When uh, someone says, is that pistol double action or is it single action? That refers to how many jobs does the trigger have not how many ways you can shoot the gun people get all wrapped around the axle it's like how many jobs does the trigger have does the trigger have one job or does the trigger have two jobs so if the trigger is responsible for cocking the hammer or striker and releasing it it's double if the trigger is only responsible for releasing the hammer and that's it or spring or firing pin, you know, or striker, or whatever, uh, then, ergo, uh, it is a single action. So with the 1873, which this was, now, they also, to your to your quote, Marty, or to your supposition, they, they sent the gun away 
to the armors, the FBI armors, or it was either the FBI or it was Arizona State, and they inspect it. This first thing they do when there's a shooting is they check the gun to make sure that it is, it is uh, in manufacturer spec condition, and the answer is it is. It was. It had been not. It had not been modified. So no modification. No modification. It was factory spec, which means in order to shoot a single action army gun, whether it's Colt or you know forty five Colt or thirty eight Smith and Wesson or forty four seventy forty not forty four seventy forty four uh, special or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, what you have to do is you reach up with your thumb, whether left or right, cock it. Or you can use the palm of your hand. Or you can use the palm of your hand. Yeah, that's right, like like they do in the westerns. And then this digit here right. has to press on the go button. You have to press the little curvy thing to release it. Then it booger goes kapow. Yeah, put the booger hook on there, and it goes kapow. And then you rinse, lather, repeat until it goes click, 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 and no more noise comes out of it. So they tested it. Yeah, and uh, they said yes. We inspected the firearm. It is exa- in exact. It's it was so a. The only reason that I bring that up is just his his statements. Yeah, and again, I'm not defending. That he was that just holding it. whatsoever. I'm holding the gun where she told me to hold it before explaining how he pulled back and later released the hammer of the gun. I said to her in the scene, "I'm going to cock the gun. Do you want to see that?" Uh, she confirmed. I let go of the hammer and the gun goes off. I never pulled the trigger. So would it be plausible or possible that he didn't pull the trigger all the way back to where it locks, but then he released it and it still had enough force to do that. Uh, Let me give you some inside baseball. This is not a, an antique 1870, 188 or 73 gun. This actually is a, was a Navy arms replica. It was a replica produced by a company called Navy Arms in Italy. Uh, Italy actually makes the best Old West Western gun replicas. Uh, if you want really good Old West gun replicas, whether they're hammer-fired double-barrel shotguns or revolvers or whatever, Italy, Army San Marco makes really good ones, and our ASM might have made this one. Where did you find uh, what gun he was using? Oh, I, I've read it in previous articles. Okay, I've heard it was a forty-five peacemaker. Well, that's that's the that's the same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't know. It, it has lots of names: the smoke wagon, the wheel gun, the I peacemaker, the wagon. all that. You know, the equal, the great equalizer. Skin but that fact, smoke wagon. Huh? Skin that smoke wagon. Yeah, skin that smoke wagon. Right. Go to total work. So here's the deal: he's a liar. And in addition to being a liar, he's also one of the greatest, one of the biggest hypocrites on planet Earth. Uh, Alec Baldwin, in addition to being famously pro-gun control, uh, but that's for you peasants. That's not for him because he's part of the ruling class elite. And you know that, that those rules only apply to the peasantry. If, if Hollywood elite millionaires want to play with guns, well, they should be allowed to play with guns because they're not you. Okay, that's the biggest thing at play right here. And the fact that when a police officer who was exonerated for a justifiable self-defense shooting, uh, Baldwin jumped in immediately and said, I wonder what it's like to kill someone negligently or wrongfully kill someone. Well, now you know what you wish for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That didn't age well. So karma's a bitch. Karma is a bitch. And, uh, the, here's the facts. All of this, all Russ. the bull crap aside, these people on this set were grossly negligent. Every single person who is in charge should be held accountable. The director. Well, the, forget that the Anna Gutierrez Reed, the armor, the chick who was in charge of the, the firearms on set, she's who, charged. Who had also. no business having the job that she had. It was complete nepotism. She was yep. a she was a an incompetent boob, but uh, the the fact that they had live ammunition on the set of a movie is inexcusable. But before I, the, before the media went into hardcore cover up on this, they they admitted that there were other actors like oh yeah we were out in the desert target shooting with the with the guns from the movie. Like you were what? 
You had yeah. live ammunition on set. Do you know the huge faux pas that is in Hollywood? See, professionals in Hollywood have been just like spinning it because they're no. You never have live we've ammunition talked, on a set. Water. Remember the, uh, the guy we talked to at Chat Show? I don't want to say his name because he said he didn't want to talk about it. So I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, he said I don't want to talk about it. I want to talk about that. But uh, in re- but in what regard that he confirmed that you never ever under well, any circumstances I wanted, have have- on, I wanted to have him on the show and just talk about his profession and all the safety measures that go into preventing something like this that that happened. And, you know, his thoughts and his perspective on and his theory on what happened. And he's like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, okay. and, and that, and, you know, that's kind of a shame that, that, that we, we know people that could clear the air, shall uh-huh. we say about certain subjects, but don't want they're to, so, they're afraid they're, afraid they're going to lose their, that if they, know, if they go out and speak the truth, gonna then people canceled. will, yeah, yeah, people will come out and they'll attack them and, and so forth. But, and I can tell you all this sloppiness uh, is because they're, well, intellectually lazy. First of all, they do make prop guns, right? They do make blank firing sure. only prop guns and they use them in Hollywood all the time. But, those are ex- probably expensive, or, or I would say they're they're harder to find than a regular gun. In the United States, it's harder to find a prop gun that looks realistic. Now, you can get blank firing guns that look like basically toys, like zinc metal toys, you know. Uh, but to get one that sure. looks exactly like the real thing, but only accepts and fires blank ammunition, blah, blah, is uh, it's harder to find. So the cheap, easy way to do it is to just go out and get real guns, and rather than have somebody produce hundreds of dummy rounds that, that don't have powder in them but look like actual cartridges, you just go and buy a box of, of rounds and you load them up. Like the, the picture of this, of this uh, incompetent boob uh, in the, doing the cross pistols thing like she's Pancho Villa, those are probably live cartridges in that belt. Uh, as we know, they had very little professionalism going on there and i feel bad for the guy who was like the lead prop master the dude is a lead prop master he probably was put in a position where you can't criticize the the green-haired she's the funny thing is they put this picture of her up but the first picture that was released of her she had like the typical all the color hair yeah the millennial green mohawk and and you know weirdness but I'm sure this dude's like, you better not say bad stuff about any of these people in public if you ever want to work again, ever. Uh, oh, yeah. Absolutely. So and now she's facing manslaughter charges, and I guarantee she's going to sing like a, a canary. But I don't understand why she hasn't talked already because there's one guy that was charged that's already given up and turned state witness. Yeah, that's the uh, uh, the process. I, I, I will the, say that. Is that the pro- the no main no the, the, the yeah guy? the assistant director David Hall, who was handed who was given the gun by Gutierrez. All right, what do we know about women that have hyphenated last names? Can they be trusted? Maybe <laughs> no, <laughs> dude. Well, I've been I, saying I that say for that- ten years. Any woman with a hyphenated last name cannot be trusted. I will say this: that something we need to think about is these people might be being held to NDAs, like the company might be like, hey. <laughs> Don't talk about that. He pre- said NDA. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure. Sh- I'm in a murder trial. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, maybe when, someone might be threatening them. Though, when whether someone it's gets killed, not. when someone dies, that yeah, that uh, that no, it's no longer. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, <laughs> like, yeah, somebody's dead. Uh, that just you know. So anyway, uh, I don't feel sorry for Alec Baldwin. They're like, you should. You never know. That could be you. I'm like, first of all, I don't didn't go out. And so the bad karma that Alec Baldwin did, uh, I didn't go on Twitter to accuse a police officer of murder when he actually was exonerated for a justifiable shooting. I'm not the one who goes on socialist media and 
screams for gun control and civilian disarmament and then goes out and plays with guns because I'm a hypocrite? You know, if, if you really think guns are dangerous and bad and have no place in our society, great. Don't play with them. You see, but the people in Hollywood are the biggest hypocrites on the planet. I can't remember who it was, and it doesn't matter, but remember when they did that demand a plan, the black and white video after Sandy Hook, and they got all those Hollywood people to go, it's time. We must demand a plan. Call your congressman. And they had like 25 or 30 of them. And somebody went in, and they and the thing is, that's the great thing about the internet, is they found footage of every single one of those Hollywood scumbags shooting guns, holding guns, playing with guns in movies, TV shows, and everything. It's like, oh, so you make movies and TV shows where you play with guns, but then you're going to go and say, guns are terrible. We've got to get guns out of the hands of people. And oh, It's like, who do you think made them sexy? Who do you think made them cool? It was you, you Hollywood puke face scumbag. That's what makes it even worse. Like, I'm going to go make movies says, about how cool and sexy it is to now, shoot guns. Now there, it says there are 44 witnesses, including director Joel Souza, who was wounded by the bullet. The pastor through Hutchins, Hutchins will testify at the preliminary hearing on February 24th. That's 44 people that they're going to have to uh, send through. Uh, uh, well, maybe even more than that, but um, Ain't one of them. Shot. He was also shot. It went through the Hutchin girl. Yeah, it went through her, and it, and it stopped in him. The extensive Which, yeah. list also extends to armor and prop worker Seth Kinney, camera assistant Lane Looper, line producer Gabriel Pickle, or Gabrielle Pickle, and script supervisor Mame Mitchell. Yeah, well, it's also in the lawsuit, in the this Hutchinson chick's husband's wrongful death lawsuit, the producers, the executive directors, everybody whose name is attached to that movie is going to be in the lawsuit. Oh, yeah. That's just the way it is. So, um, Alec Baldwin, the, to close, because we actually have a whole show to do, but to close, Alec Baldwin is a giant piece of human filth. He's a hypocrite. He's a Hollywood puke bag, and, uh, well, good luck. All right, Duracoat Firearms. Yeah, we're going to talk about that as soon as we play the cool bump-in music. All righty then. All righty hey, then. Music. What happened? Is that you playing the bump in music? No, no, I don't. That is uh, the bump in music that uh, Zach acquired. I, yeah, mean, I would think that you do your own bumper music, you know, being the I, guitar fish. Well, I can are. I can play, but we don't have the professional studio equipment. We don't want it to sound like Paul was sitting in the music room recording with his iPhone. <laughs> there, there are things you can do. I know. You got, I know. got an audio technical special specialist there in jared <laughs> i've been tickling the ivories lately oh have you now <laughs> yeah i've been tickling the ivories that's uh, that's the my oh never mind yeah oh it's, we can go so many places with that but uh no actually i have been i've been doing finger exercises on on the keyboard the piano on the piano yeah i've been doing f- like fingering piano. exercises to try and limber up my hands there Is this something you just started or have you always yeah no i just uh, something i just started Okay. Because there's a piano up there in the music room, so I do that. But this is we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about Duracoat because it's the Duracoat finished firearm segment of the week. And, uh, well, I was yesterday I was out in the cold. It wasn't as cold yesterday as it has been. Matter of fact, it was, it was so warm. It was about 25 degrees Celsius. And no, Fahrenheit. Not Fahrenheit. Not Celsius. 25 degrees Fahrenheit. What? Yeah. <laughs> I was I'm so I was, confused right now. I was still in in Daily Mail. Co. Uk. <laughs> I was I was talking to our, our British audience, but uh, so I actually got warm. I was out snowshoeing, and uh, when I first started, I was like, mm, I better put one more layer on. And then by the time I was done, I was like, yeah, I really didn't need that layer because it's twenty five. And man, whew. Uh, yeah, Marty, we got about four feet of hard pack 
when it's not even hard pack, it's like a combination um, oh. here on the ground. There's, there's legitimately two feet of hard pack that we walk on to get to the house. Uh, <laughs> we got snow, so you need snow? I'll give you some. Uh, bro, we have no snow here in Tennessee. I, I get you some. I'll ship it to you. Um, I would love it. I love snow. It was funny. Like- the uh, One of the car dealers in uh, town, they, you know how when you have a lot, you just pie you get that one end of the lot and you just pile all the snow up into that corner and disregard that corner until march or april well there's a mountain about 20 feet tall and they went out and they bought signage and they put signage out facing the street that says free snow so <laughs> that's funny I, I thought that's smart for a car dealership because people are like aha i get a little chuckle out of that and then i'm like who is that oh that's yeah. that's Bruce Buffer Honda there. I'm going to jump in and buy one of their Hondas. If they were really marketing geniuses, they would take their 4 by 4s that they have for sale and take them out there. Yeah. (laughs) I I really like snow too, Marty, and I really appreciated the first three feet of it this year. Um, But I'm I'm just kind of like, yeah, all right. That Snow. snow that we've been asking for, we've got it now. There's actually a picture that was released, satellite images from uh, over Utah, and they showed the difference in the snowpack between last year and this year. Well, last year was horrible because we didn't have much snow, which is what led to the drought conditions in the summertime. This yeah. year is crazy. Like the pretty much the entire Utah is uh, the entire right. state of Utah is actually white from yeah. the satellite images. There's a lot of snow out here. There in they had a in Saratoga had some kind of insane that we had an insane freaking wind freeze warning last week. It was, it was, st- it was going to be, I think your mom said, I don't want to, I don't want to like uh, engage in hyperbole here. Um, but it was like third negative 30 wind chill. So do not have, ex, you know, th- that's when they say all exposed skin is subject to immediate frostbite and damage and stuff like that. That's cold. And another thing that that's happens, cold. especially in older homes, when there's wind like that, is the wind goes through the cracks. It, it goes through into the house. Your house it freezes whistles. the pipes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it, it freezes the pipes in the middle of the house. Yeah. The, you know, usually when you have frozen pipes and they burst, it's on the edge. Yeah. But if it, Bursts in the center of your house. There's a whole lot more damage that happens. Yeah. So, so Duracoat Farm finishes. Yeah. So if you Duracoat the outside of your house, that will not happen. No. <laughs> but uh, actually, I was uh, I was in the cold and and my brain was was moving around. I was thinking them. Uh, a lot of people like to do seasonal colors uh, on their guns. You know, they have to do seasonal colors. And if they uh, if you want to do a Duracoat project. You need to make sure that the project itself is above 32 degrees. You don't want the gun frozen. Uh, so hot and cold, cold and hot. If you're going to do a uh, project, uh, you don't have to, you know, your garage or your workshop doesn't have to be you know, 72 degrees. Uh, it can be 45 degrees. You just want to make sure that the project is the same temperature as the air. You know what I'm talking about, guys? Uh, that's something that uh, I don't think we talk about enough Um well, I don't know how many people do winter training. I was out snowshoeing and I had all my gear on and was doing that. Uh, when you do your maintenance on your guns, if you read the U.S. Army's cold weather manual or the Marine Corps' cold weather manual, and the Marine Corps just borrowed from the Army, uh, they will tell you that you should do maintenance on the guns at the at indoor temperature, whatever that is, right? So if you you bring it in, let it get the temperature, whatever the temperature is, 45 degrees, 50 degrees, whatever the air is, do the maintenance on it, then you're done. Now, in Arctic temperatures, they tell you not to bring, if your guns are, you know, freezing, don't bring them in. Because that constant in, out, in, out, in, out causes condensate condensation. Now, I say condensation, you mean like water? Yeah. What does condensation do to firearms, Marty? You know, you live in the South. It uh, moistens them and makes them rusty. And makes them rust. So uh, why do we put Duracoat on our on steel? Because it prevents rust. That's right. It keeps it from rusting. So, yeah, if you're going to take it in and out, in and out of the cold, in and out of the heat, in the humidity and so forth, 
Uh, and let me tell you what, people are like, oh, there's no humidity in the mountains. There's a little bit of humidity when there's four feet of snow on the ground. Because there's, there's a little bit of moisture in the air. Just a little bit. Uh, so if you want your guns not to rust in the hot or in the cold, uh, you can, uh, well, you can and you should put Duracoat on all of the steel parts uh, and uh, you'll be a happy camper. If you still would, are interested in an official student of the gun blue, write to Duracoat. Now, we told you guys how to do this. You go to Durac, you follow the hyperlink, and then you go to the bottom of the page, and it says, contact us. You click there, and it says, send a note. And you send them a note. And the note says, yes, I would love to purchase official student of the gun blue. And if they get enough interest, they will make it happen because this is, uh, well, it's a a family-owned company, and they don't have to go before a 12-person board of directors and pitch every single product. There's a couple of, there's like two people that sit down and say, that's a good idea, let's do it. So there you go. I think there's more than that. Well, yeah, but uh, it's not like trying to get something through Remington or Federal or whatever where you you got to convince a board. Go ahead. Let me ask. Let me ask you, so with the, the Duracoat, what's the process? Is it is it like a uh, a spray? Have they got a spray, or is this a bake-on? Or- no baking. The process of Duracoat. Shame on you. No. Uh, well, there's there's a few different ways that you can do it, actually. The one that we're talking about is uh, Canon Can Technology. Um, for, those, for the professional users, they could use the baking process to shorten the time if they're trying to make money. A drying uh, oven, yeah. Yeah, a drying oven. Um, yeah. But yeah, the one that we're talking about is can and can technology. So you've got the hardener and the actual color in the same can, but and, separated. And inside that one can, there's there's two cans. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yep. So it looks like a the, a normal spray paint can, but it's actually not. Inside is a small can. It's pressurized and it has the hardener, so it's separate from the color. So you can put that on a shelf and it'll last forever. And then you combine the two. You flip it over. You push a button and they. Whoosh, they combine, you shake yeah. it, shake, 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 and now you can Duracoat uh, like a pro in your own workshop or garage or whatever. And how long does it have to, to sit Well, on you can touch it. You can, it it's, it's dry to the touch after about an hour or so. Okay. But they tell you you need to give it, if you're not going to use a drying oven, uh, and you don't have to have a drying oven, to leave that sucker alone for two weeks. Don't, oh, wow. don't shoot it. Don't put it back in the holster. Don't, you know, uh, leave it for two yeah. weeks. It will It'll harden. Like it will cure. And you uh, then you'll be good. You know, it's funny. Uh, Jared, didn't we have somebody who was uh, in our audience said, people complain. They're like, they have no idea about industrial finishing and so forth. And they sent us the, the, the directions. Was it for Caterpillar? I think it might have been for Caterpillar. It was like the official instructions. It was for on, heavy equipment. For heavy yeah. equipment uh, and how you need to leave it alone and let it let the paint cure, let mm-hmm. let the, the color cure. Um, and, I, and I'll tell you, I am the worst person on planet Earth when it comes to that. Because, you got no patience. Because I want to touch stuff. I want to use it. I want to show it. I want to take a picture of it. I want to do all that. Um, so all the stuff that I've actually had done in at the shop in in Wisconsin <laughs> is immaculate and uh, some of the stuff that I've done myself I well we won't talk about that but uh, <laughs> you know actually the the best looking one Jared that I that I've done and that that I did correctly and I super hardcore disciplined myself I did it and I left I left it alone was the Occam defense AK, I did the tiger stripe, the Vietnam tiger stripe pattern on the Occam defense gun. That's yeah. what's on. You got a Vietnam tiger on your Occam gun? Yeah, you want to see it? Get No, get the F out of here. Yeah, show me. Hold on. Yeah. No. If you guys... Who are listening, now we can talk crap about Marty because he doesn't yeah, have his yeah. headphones on. If you guys... Reset, go. If you guys are not familiar with the Occam Defense, the ODS 1775 AK, it is the Cadillac of Kalashnikov rifles. It's the Zach, Cadillac. Make Marty's picture big. All right. So, Marty. 
There we go. <laughs> yeah, Marty's going to hold it up for you guys. He's got all the doodads and stuff. Ah, yeah, yours is a, li yours is a little different than mine, but uh, who did that for you, Marty? Did you do that, or did you send it away to somebody? No, oh, Brian did it. Oh, Brian did it. Okay, so Brian did that. Yeah. Brian's a talented man. He is he a talented many man. Different things. He, he is a renaissance oh. man for sure. Somebody in his shop did it. Oh, okay. Did you see that in the background of Marty's video, there is a bowcaster? <laughs> it looks like a crossbow. Is is that a crossbow attached to an AR lower? Uh, I will show it to you. <laughs> We're going to keep making him get up. <laughs> Hang on. Let me take off my headphones and walk over and pick this up. To those of you who are listening, you can check out our various video channels to see this show and tale. That's right. So this is a point. Um, I can't remember what they called it. The wrath. Okay. Man, there's so much going on there. That's crazy. So it, much going it's, on. It's a collapse or a foldable stock as well. It's, it's a little it both tight. retracts and folds for yep. easy storage. So it's adjustable. And then it also folds, but it—I mean, it only folds this much. Oh, okay. Yeah. So That's it's pretty it, light, huh? But it's not. How heavy is it? Uh, it's about nine pounds. Oh yeah, that's okay. pretty heavy. So it's, but it isn't. I know that there were companies, or it was a company out there that was making an upper that you could just drop onto an AR lower, and you yeah. could. Yeah, that exists. Yeah, that there exists, is. but that's not what that is. Okay, so that is that for the Duracoat Finish Fire, our moment of the week, and we're moving on to this little thing do. called mid-roll. <laughs> we can play show and tell all day long. Uh, mid-roll. You guys want to do mid-roll? Yeah, mid-roll. High Point Firearms, the makers of the JXP10 10-millimeter pistol. Uh, I, I saw that uh, our friend... Uh, Sean did a spoof thing where he was, yeah, he, he picked like one up and he's like, ah, ah, ah. like, they're not that heavy, Sean. You, you need to eat some Wheaties, bro. Bro, <laughs> bro, if, if, if you pick up the, the, uh, no, I was going to say, I saw something posted on Instagram. You know, they've got a threaded barrel, um, high point now. Oh, yeah. They have it's, for a while. High dash okay. point, yeah. yeah. The, no, was, the uh, high dash point firearms. The the uh, it's just the basic right I now. Think the JXP ten comes with. Oh yeah, the JXP ten comes with a threaded barrel. So yeah. it has a threaded barrel, and uh, then they also have a nine millimeter. They've got a C nine that is factory threaded. Uh, so you can get a. a, a it's the E Cannon G one TB threaded stands for threaded barrel. Uh, you can get that with a threaded barrel. And that, that's half by 28. That's standard 9 mil thread. Now, the JXP is probably going to be, uh, there's a, a in American manufacturing, they have with a, a 45 caliber thread pitch, uh, which they use on 10s and 40s, or in 45s, that is, and 40s too. Um, and uh, all of their carbines now, I believe all the carbines come with, threaded barrels i know that the 10 mil i like their carbines. i yeah. do like their carbines the 10 mil comes with a threaded barrel uh and they have a nine mil with a threaded barrel so yeah the jxp 10 i don't know if you already said this or not and i just missed it but the jxp 10 magazines are interchangeable with the carbines yeah they sure are they sure are okay so not all of the thread not all of them are threaded but you can purchase a threaded barrel uh nine mil carbine and the 10 mil carbine is also a threaded barrel as well. So there now, aren't you are. the only uh, manufacturer that does a, a 9, a 10, a 45. Do they do a 380 also in their carbines? No, I don't think they do a 380 carbine. They do a 9, a 40, a 10, and a 45. I don't, yes, they might have discontinued the, the 40. 380, I don't know. 380 ACP carbine, they do. Get out of town. Yep. It's the model 3895, 380. ACP that, that you're yep see Jared has he's got the Google fingers and uh, so welcome. there you go well what it's easy for them because what they do is they have the pistols and they just build the fire the they essentially build the gun around the magazine around the action um, 
that's why the you know the 10 mil carbine and the 10 mil pistol use the, exact, the same magazines so you know and if you don't want you know if you don't like high point and it offends you that they exist then then go somewhere else i don't really give a crap but here's the deal that freaking 10 mil pistol is msrp to 299 yeah, it's crazy. That's in a insane. Time where everybody's raising prices because of inflation, there's a couple companies out there, High Point included, that have figured out how to lower the price and make things more affordable for people. I was dreaming about ten millimeter pistols last night. You have some weird dreams. I had it. Well, you were there because someone handed you one, and you're, and you you said, "What is this?" And they're like, "It's a ten. And you had pulled the magazine out and stuffed a piece of nine on top of it. And I was like, "No, that's that's wrong. Take that out of there." And so, in the dream, I, we I held see, up. I'm, the, I'm I'm the I'm the dumb son. Well, it was it is. <laughs> and I, I can't tell you, but uh, it we held up the ten mil cartridge and the nine and compared them to each other. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, sometimes I dream about 10 millimeter pistols, but don't tell anybody. All right. <laughs> uh, one, of the, one of the cool things that I don't think we talk about enough is what? that if you go to high-pointfirearms.com, you can actually buy things from that site. So if they you go to store, the menu, yeah. you can get magazines, optics, grips and shrouds, holsters, etc. Yeah, you got to be 18. So, uh, Do the dash be silent? The dash don't be silent. The dash don't be silent. Okay. All right. All right. So a little inside baseball there. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, well, come back later. Maybe you'll get it later. All right. Marty, do you have a Juxy channel for, for uh, Talking Lead? That's right. I just put you Jared, on the spot. Jared, do I have a Juxy? Yes. Marty's got a Juxy channel. Yes, what I do, Paul. I, all right. If you guys Good go to shootingthegun.com slash Juxy, if you guys are a content creator, in the uh, and you're listening to me right now make sure that your content's safe we've just seen a sweeping change in the youtube algorithm that's something that i've been talking about for years this is going to happen it's going to keep happening the more compliant you make your content the more rules are, are going to be so your content is no longer compliant with the rules of the algorithm it's the Go california juicy channel i'm so to, sick to death of youtube yeah well in it's one of those things where what i tell people for juicy is Juxy is an in addition to platform. Unless you want to completely nuke your YouTube, that's totally fine. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. It's an in addition to platform. You can just get over there, create a Juxy channel for your content, and then set it up to import. So when you upload something to YouTube and you use it for marketing purposes, the content also goes to your Juxy channel. It creates a copy on our servers so that your content is safe. I have a question. Um, is it does it work backwards? So can I upload to Juxy and then send it to YouTube? No, but you're the second person that's requested that, so maybe it's a because I would rather thing. that be my main upload rather than YouTube because I hate YouTube. I want it to go away. It's just a it's a you know yeah a, a zit on my ass right now that just exists and hopefully you know it'll eventually go away. So, uh, do you want to make it eventually go away or do you want to pop it? <laughs> it's it's one of those things. I'll, I will leave it there as long as they'll leave it there. And because I still have some people that will, for whatever reason, they still go to YouTube and they, you know, they get their stuff from YouTube. Yep. I don't encourage it. I don't encourage my listeners, my subscribers, anybody to go to, to YouTube. Um, now, you know, I let them know that stuff's there that they can go and, and watch it, but I'd rather have another main alternative to where this is where everything's going. And then if it pushes out to these other places, fine. Yeah. Now that's, that's one of the things that we have on the development board, but it's, it, there's two people that would use that, that I have been told would use that feature. So it's like, do we spend, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to make this because thing possible? Are still brainwashed and thinking that YouTube is, you know, the, the do all be all. And they're, you know, they're ridiculous. They're not making money off YouTube. They're not making any, you know, this monetization for the firearms industry is gone. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. And the people that are aren't making it from YouTube. They're making it from their advertisers. Right. Yeah. Sponsoring them. That's where yeah. their money's coming from. Yep. And that money should be should be going to a, a platform like uh like Juxy. Like yeah. Juxy. Yeah. And and that, you know, that's where our support should go is, is to a platform like that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that, Mark. Well, I wish more people thought like you. Uh one of the I can confirm that the monetization 
monetization from YouTube for the gun content creators is pretty dry because I went through, oh, it was probably, you know, a two month time frame where I was talking to creators trying to figure out, okay, how much money do you need to be paid from Juxy to make it worth transferring from YouTube to Juxy? The highest number that I got from any content creator was about $1,500. Mm. And that's way lower than I expected because you hear these success stories of people on YouTube outside the gun world that yeah, are, no, that are making, figures. you know, six figures just from the ad revenue of their videos. That doesn't include sponsorships or discrete advertising or anything like that. I think maybe, and, maybe, you know, 15, 10, 15 years ago, maybe that was the case, but I highly doubt that it is now, you know, people like Hiccup, um, I don't know what he's making. You know, I've heard rumors in the past of what he was, you know, making just from the ad revenues. But uh, I, I just, I, I'm skeptical. Yeah. yeah. If, if you are a person that's creating gun content and you're making more than $1,500 from YouTube every single month, call me. Let's chat. Yeah. There you go. Well, I, I'm going to give you guys a, an inside of baseball exclusive. I'm going to tell you the very next video from student of the gun. That's going to be on juicy.com. And it's going to be my interview with Kayla. I was interviewed uh, by Kayla Lewis this weekend. Uh, that's James's daughter. If you guys don't know. And uh, she asked me, we had a discussion about the bad advice. Bad advice can kill people. You see, in, in our arena, if I give people bad advice, innocent good people can die. It, it's not like, you know, you have a weight loss channel or you have a, a whatever, you know, a gamer channel. Or if somebody gets bad advice on a gamer channel, they don't die. People don't die. But if, if I give people bad advice regarding traumatic medical training, regarding concealed carry, regarding justifiable use of force and so forth, people die. So we're not screwing around here. It's very serious. Uh, and that's why I get so excited about it. And Marty, at the very beginning, Marty held up the book. Uh, he's got a copy of the Beyond the Boo Boo book. And those are, Zach, are those still available or do we sell out on the store? I believe they are still available on shopsotg.com right now. Get yourself a pin pan approved copy at shopsotg.com. There you go. Yeah, that's what that book is about. It's like, look, people need to stop listening to internet garbage and just do the right thing. Just do the right thing. And uh, when, when, when there are people out there doing the wrong thing and giving bad, dangerous advice, it makes me angry. Because they're so short-sighted and selfish and myopic. They're like, like, we want views. We want viewers. And we want clicks and and na -ma -na -na -ma -na -na. Uh, So we're going to put out this garbage. We're going to regurgitate. We're going to vomit up this crap that people have been saying for years. And we're terrible about that in our, in our industry. We, we you know write articles and and do YouTube videos regurgitating the same old tired crap that has been disproven ten years ago. Uh, but but if you gives, can't do it with two, then you can't do it at that's all. That's right. You don't worry about how many rounds are in your gun because you can't get it done with the first couple shots. You're probably it's not going to get it done. Dangerous to carry one in the chamber anyway, so you can't do that either. Yeah, and, and all this garbage. But to, anyway, and those two things were jokes for those yeah. of you that didn't pick <laughs> up on the sarcasm. So long story short, I, I want to, uh, on this public show, to acknowledge uh, Kayla, who's really doing a tremendous job, and, and Heather and Joey, too, behind the scenes. But Kayla gets out there every single week to, to put out content and to give. And if you do nothing else, just watch her Medical Monday videos. She gives great, fantastic little single-topic videos that are easy to consume you know it's only 12 10 15 minutes you know uh you've got the time and uh you know she is a registered nurse and of course she's been through immediate action medical and she knows how to do all that stuff jared do you know they they beat us like like rented mules the only way that we can beat them is if one of our students uses the traumatic medical training on the way in, home no in the class because they had oh what 
No way. No, they had a student take immediate action medical, get in their car, start driving home, witness a rollover car crash, pull off, run up, kid's got his arm severed, tourniquets the arm, saves the kid's life on the way home from the class. So wow. the only way we're going to beat we that is... We were like, if, hey, we, you know, 13 days after taking our it class... It wasn't even that, dude, it was like eight. No, I, oh, it was it eight? It was eight. At least that's the story they're oh, telling cow. here. Um, but unless somebody uses the... Unless somebody uses it during class, <laughs> we're probably not going <laughs> to... Unless they're in class and they, you know, something happens. Yeah. But uh, Marty, you you read the book, correct? I mean, you got Lulu, it. I have not read it. Oh. I've got it. I have not read it. He's, he's got it. Read it. You, gave this, you gave me this around SHOT Show, so I've not had an opportunity Actually, to. Actually, uh, Marty, I gave it to you before then. So I didn't so, get it until then. You could have taken and it I with said, you. I had around, around SHOT. I had, to, I had to read Stephen uh, Hunter's book. Sorry. Oh, okay. All right. I was going to ask you for a review, but I don't want you to give me a review. Although, you we'll know. We'll back on after he reads it. Another, let me read it, and then we'll do that. Yeah, All we'll right, do the cool. show for a review. Nice. Yeah. So the next video that Zach is going to share uh, on our Juxy account is going to be uh, the video. Did you ever get any feedback from? Um, so that's studentofthegun.com slash Juxy. You can go there, and you watch the video called Bad Advice Can Kill People. There you go. All right, Zach, play that uh, funky music, and then we'll go on and do other things. Attention new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. All right. Can you guys believe we've already been talking for almost an hour? <laughs> Has it been an hour? Yeah, it's been 53 I'm minutes. Glad. Yeah, it's crazy. All right. Let's just go ahead and bump right on into our Brownells bullet points brought to you by Brownells. All right, Brownells Bullet Points is where we always talk about, well, this is our gear-centric segment. Generally, we talk about pieces, parts, components, and all that kind of stuff. We talk about ammunitions and, uh, you know, all that good thing. Well, this weekend, I did a uh, battle box review, right? And one of the things that occurred to me was how important is that it is. on studentofthegun.com slash juxy? No, it's not. It. No, I literally just submitted oh, all the video. <laughs> Zach still got to edit it. Uh, but oh. what I like to Faster do... Faster slave. What I like to do when I do those is I open them up. I like, this is what's in it. Look how cool this is. And then I try my very best to get out and use it. To go out somewhere. What's a battle? Battle box oh, is one of the subscription the boxes. You know what it is. You're just... Okay. What's in it? What's in a battle box? What's in a battle we box? We have listeners that might not know. Battle yeah. box. So What's know in, that kind of stuff? It's like the same thing It's in a Klondike bar. But uh, no, um, you, you get each week you, or each month you get different stuff, outdoor stuff, CCW stuff, adventure stuff. Like the Mission 93, there was a gorilla serve, uh, knife, um, a Holtzen gorilla knife, and there was a medic, my medic hiker's medical kit. And there was some axe wax in case you want to wax your axe. Um, this kind of stuff. Oh, wow. Did you I literally? I have one sitting right next to me. This is a an outdoor shower, that? two gallon tank. Is that from Battle Box or your... from Loot Crate? It's from Crate Club. Crate Club. They're very similar boxes. So, long story short, I, uh, on like Saturday, I recorded the A roll for those of you that's the sitting at the table talkie talk. And then. One of the reasons I was snowshoeing yesterday is because I put all the stuff in my gear and I went out and I oh nice snowshoed out. And uh, one of the things that was in this week's or this month's or whatever, the Mission 93, was a little pack stove. You know those cool little aluminum ones that 
you, they, they, you take them apart and they're super compact and flat and then you assemble them and you, you know, uh, anyway, it's a little, little pack stove. And so uh, I, I had my canteen cup and I had the hot snot, uh, and also a tampon. Yeah, you, you know what hot snot is? Dude, if you if if you need to start a fire, it's the best stuff ever. It comes in a big big fat black tube with green writing on it, and uh, you squeeze a little bit of it out, touch it with a match, uh, or you can flick sparks onto it with one of them fire starting kits. Things. That's pretty cool, uh, and it'll yeah. it'll light. And some so it's I but highly I, flammable. Yeah, super flammable. Uh, that's what we use for our uh, our fireplace, our wood burning stove, the Elio. Uh, I put a little bit of that on and I start the fire. I, I don't, I'm so far, and it's a good thing because nobody makes newspapers anymore. Uh, I'm so far beyond the wadding up newspaper stage and stuff like that. That's like child's play at this point in time. Uh, but uh, yeah, and it occurred to me that why it is so important to test out your stuff. Like I said, Brownells bullet points is all about, it's gear centric when you talk, whatever it is. So if I can encourage you, I know we like to buy things because things are cool. You know, we like to hold things in our hands and look at things and stuff. You don't like to buy things, Marty? I like to get them free. Yeah. <laughs> That's even better. We like to acquire I things. I like that. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you need to get out and test it. Get it out of the plastic wrapper. You know, throw the wrappers away, throw the cardboard boxes away, right? It's like that, uh, that may may that's floating around and says, I don't know who needs to hear this, but it's time to throw away your iPhone box. You will never <laughs> need it. Oh my I've God. Talk, I've talked about this on the show before. I don't think Marty's an Apple dude, but I am. And, uh, I've talked about this on the show where it's like the Apple box is so the nice. only one that has made me keep it the empty box like, <laughs> like, when I move out, I'm like, why do I still have this? Now I throw them away. But there was a, when I first started getting Apple products, I would just keep the box. Oh yeah. Cause it the experience of opening the product. Whoever does, was the person in charge of designing the packaging and whatnot did a fantastic job because what out. they did is, Oh, I still have my iPod box. You have oh, your iPod. Is, look at that. I was wondering if you were paying attention to his video, Jerry. No, I wasn't. No, yeah. pay attention. That's right, my friend. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I've got. I keep all my boxes. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But there's a may may going around that says, "I don't know who ne who needs to hear this." Yep. But throw away your iPhone box. You'll never. We all need understand. It. All right. Oh. What when we moved, when we packed up all the stuff from the last house, I went down in the storage room and there was. The, my iPhone box from two years ago. Is that a box? Is that a stack of boxes? That is a stack of boxes. That's my microphone that this came in, my recording equipment boxes. I keep I keep all my boxes. It's it's the collector mentality in me. You know, I grew up um, you know, the comic book, comic book golden age. Huh. And, you know, my mom threw away all my comic books and my G.I. Joe's, you know, and things like that. And then as I got older, I saw that they were more valuable if you had the package, you know, with them. So, yeah. Yeah. That's just, it's stuck in my oh, mind. That's interesting. Yeah. I always wondered why that was. Everything. Because oh, I, I mean, used I, to keep the boxes for all the recording equipment because I thought, oh, if, we, if we're if we going to travel with this, I'll just put it back in the box. And then it's like, no, you don't need to do that anymore because there's the, the, uh, Pelican cases, you got the Eiler cases, you got all these cases you can get and put everything in, and it's even more safe than it would be in the regular box. Yeah. But yeah, the collector mentality, I never thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> so Brownells bullet points, the point for the bullet point of the Brownells bullet points is if you're gonna buy stuff, get it out of the freaking packaging, use it, test it, know that it's gonna work before you actually need it in the real world, and then Throw away the plastic and the wrappers and all the other crap. All right, it's time for me to be quiet and Zach to talk. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the Pimpan brands that you love. 
ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Now, Marty, I'm there with you, man. I had I had to make myself... I had to make myself do like, like, no, you don't need these boxes. Throw them away. I, and, but I still do have, I, I have a, a, a tote that has hollow sun, aim point, EOTech. I've got th- the boxes and that the optics came in. Uh, I've got those I have boxes. You know what it was, What? It was the fact that you got to a point where you're like, okay, I got to either build an an, uh, addition to this house. I have to buy a new house or I have to get rid of some empty boxes. (laughs) Uh, Oh, Zachary, tell everybody about the new Goliath slings on the store. Yes, indeed you do. Our boys over at Ready Man, just uh, they've got their Goliath slings back in stock. If you know uh, much about uh, Ready Man, and you've been paying attention to the student of the gun store as well. You all know that we've been selling what they call survivor slings, but they are essentially shepherd slings for a right. while now. They come with the amazing, critically and commercially acclaimed uh, sling bullets, which are pretty awesome. We got a bunch of new colors for those as well. But the Goliath slings are a slightly larger and much, much stronger version of the survivor sling. See, the Survivor Slings are just made out of standard, run-of-the-mill, black paracord. Good stuff, works, blah, blah, blah. But the Goliath Sling is powerful. It is a, it is much stronger. It is reinforced. It's not made out of just regular old paracord. It's made out of, ah, crap. What do they call it? One Un- moment. Unobtainium? Adamantium? Dinar? Dinar? Kevlar? Kevlar? I it don't know. Made, it didn't, the click didn't work. They're oh, you clicked it. Click it. Do, 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 that wood do, do, do. apocalypse cord, which is <laughs> reinforced with apocalypse. ten pound, with ten pound fishing wire, uh, and it is not, uh, heat resistant, has friction straws, it's all kinds of great stuff. But the it's point crazy. is, it is like the big, the big tough brother of the survivor sling, and they are available right now on shopsotg.com at the time of this episode's release. You can get those as well as the again critically acclaimed sling bullets. There you they go. Five different colors. Is that going to be in the new products when they go to the new products? It will be in the new products when you go to the new products section on shopsotg.com. Cool, 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 cool. It'll also be in the featured. Cool, 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 cool. I'll say it one more time. All right, what time is it? It is time for us to uh, go over to the uh, student of the gun homeroom. We're going to go to the university, to the homeroom, which is brought to you by our good buddies over there at Crossbreed Holsters. Yes, indeed. If you want your holster with sprinkles, well, you can get your freaking holster with sprinkles. Uh, that is a thing. That is a thing uh, if you want to do that. But uh, what we're going to talk about is what is the main what is the main driving theme of our Student of the Gun Homeroom brought to you by our good buddies at Crossbreed Holsters? What's the driving theme? To be what? Dangerous on demand, of course. To be dangerous on demand. Carry your freaking gun. Have your gun on your body. Be prepared to be dangerous on demand. That's kind of the point, right? Uh, And before I talk about this story, I'm going to remind you that when you do go over and buy your new holster with sprinkles, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, get your butt over to the website. Use the promotional code SOTG, and you will save some money on a high-quality American-made holster. Well, we're going to have a, we got a story here about someone who was not dangerous on demand and who didn't carry their gun and gee, we wonder why. Jared, you have this the uh the story open there, buddy? I will very shortly. Check the notes real quick. All right. So, but you can you can do that, right? You can read the story, Jared. Yes, well, I can go ahead and read it. If, hunt if ends ready. for mountain lion that attacked 5-year-old California boy. Efforts to track down and capture the lion were hampered by lack of access to private property near the attack site. Uh huh. And? And, and the animal's nomadic culture, officials said. This is from NBC News from 
uh, February 4th, 2023. Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay, California. This never happens. No, this never happens. California wildfire or wildfire wildlife officials have called off the search for a mountain lion that attacked a five-year-old boy who was on a hiking trail in rural Northern California, saying there was little chance of capturing the animal. The California Department of Fish and Wildlife said Friday that DNA testing confirmed that a mountain lion was responsible for the attack last Tuesday in San Mateo County. Were you with me when we went to see that comedian, Dad? That said San Mateo, or his no. name is Mateo? No. Oh, okay. It must have just been Alex. So I'm glad, I, I'm so glad that in California that they needed DNA testing to confirm that it was a mountain lion that attacked this kid, even though if you, if you follow the story, the kid's mother and grandfather were there and saw the mountain lion attack the kid. Like, ah, just because we have eyewitnesses, we, we got to do DNA. How much did it cost the state of California to do DNA testing on this kid on the bite marks? Like, yeah, that's definitely a mountain lion. It's like, no kidding. We saw it with our eyes. Well, we, yeah, yeah, it might have been a house cat or something, or, you know, it might have been a pole cat. It might have been a, you know, <laughs> I say, what? Oh, but thank the Lord for the, the California Department of Fish and Wildlife and their DNA testing, boy. Marty, did you had you seen this uh, before now? Did you see this story? I have not heard about that story, but you said that half moon, whatever, where it happened. Wasn't that where the uh, the farm worker or whatever went and shot those people? Yes, yes. That was just in the news. Yeah. Half Moon Bay. Half Moon Bay is getting famous here. I would yeah. not go there. Well, I don't know if I want that kind of thing. Mass murders. Yeah, I would just go ahead and not go there. So, yeah, when I first saw this story, this story I saw on the, on the fourth when it right when it happened, or maybe it was the third, uh, was that uh, the the wildlife officials were planning to track down and capture the uh, like capture it like what are they going to do they're going to arrest it and put it on trial do they ever catch don't they just kill them they don't they don't capture them they kill them no right? in california apparently they capture them uh well, they, they just say capture to make people feel better about themselves uh, i don't know they're so stupid they're just we're gonna they're gonna put it on trial we're gonna put the mountain lion on trial for felonious assault uh, against this child it's like what do we know about animals kids what have we learned that when an animal decides wow. that it's going to attack a human, it's never going to go backwards. It's no. ne never going to decide, you know what? That was a bad idea. I'm never going to do that again. Sorry about that. My bad. Do you know who the real villain in this story is, though? Who is the real villain? The people of California? the yeah the people that own private property because yep it says but efforts to track down and capture and capture the lion were hampered because investigators have denied access or were denied access to private property near the attack site yep uh, captain patrick foy a department spokesman said this lack of access combined with worsening weather and the pneumatic culture pneumatic nature of mountain lions has diminished the chances for a successful capture hmm you darn private landowners. Yep. Oh, yeah. They're like, yeah, if, if it wasn't just, uh, see, capitalism kills. Uh, no, communism actually kills. And there's a reason that there's so many freaking mountain lions uh, in California because they're protected and because the people are food. Now, it says here, on the article, dozens of mountain lions die on California roads every year. I guess they it's been. It's okay to run them that. over. <laughs> it's like deer, you know. You can't hunt them, but you can run them over with your car. Apparently, there's a huge population there. Everybody. There is. And what what's that going to do? They're going to hunt everything. They're, they're going to hunt out their food source. Oh, Dad. Yes. Why don't attack people? Do you, you remember the uh, the the commuter lane here that's near my house? That has, it's like its own little corridor and you skip all the lights and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So 
you know that there's no real access to get into that thing, right? Right. It's just there was a dead deer on the side of the road in the commuter lane. The idea was suicidal. I was like, how did it even get there? Did it like jump up over the the concrete barriers or what? Can yeah. jump. Yeah. yeah. So that deer was just making bad life choices. Yeah. You know, it was made bad life <laughs> Whoever choices. hit that deer pooped their pants before they hit it. Like, like, oh, there's a deer there. Getting chased by a mountain lion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or it might be. Uh, but lo- ladies and gentlemen, the reason we pu- I put this in the crossbreed uh, holsters, the um, homeroom, was by being dangerous on demand. Now, the kid uh, is at last, he was unconscious or comatose. I don't know what his condition is now. When they first took him, it said that he was unconscious. Uh, but it says, uh, now it says the father scared away the animal away. First, it was the, the first story that I re- read, the mother scared the animal away. Now, this one, it says the father scared the animal away, and he only received minor wounds. The first story I read said the kid was in the hospital unconscious. So, are you reading about the the one that happened to the seven year old boy last September? Oh yeah, that's that's it. My bad, my bad. And a, yeah, you're reading a different. I went too far down. I was. Oh uh, yeah, because it says in the same story here at the bottom, it says last September a seven year old boy was bitten by a mountain lion while walking with oh, his okay. father around. So they put the same stuff or the two different stories in the so same. So the kid way. does it have in the in the Half Moon Bay one? Does it say the condition the kid was in? Uh, uh, his mother, Susie Trexler, charged the cougar and let it go and let the boy and go it and ran off. Go. Yeah, yeah. the boy wasn't bitten, Foy said. However, his face was scratched and he had fractured bone near his eye. So it went that way. So anyway, long story short. Mountain lion the, attacks on humans are rare. Yeah, this yeah. never happens. Uh, and if you listen to wildlife professionals, they'll tell you that, you know, Marty, you, you haven't been here for this whole thing, but... We, we've been documenting bear, mountain lion, coyote, wolf attacks on humans, and ah, the see what you're doing. the whole the the story that we always get from fishing game is you know this is ex- exceptionally rare and it, 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 it's it's all basically unheard of and uh, you know it's a, and uh, you know but no, but that it's like. So are you contending that it's it's becoming more and more frequent? Uh, well, yeah, it in is. In California, it definitely has because of the, the wildfires that have driven animals back down into the area where humans are. Why are and the wildfires out of control in California? To, to expand on Dad's, uh, his, I guess, point, it would be, um, to expand on Dad's point here about the uh, it being a rare occurrence, mm-hmm. it probably is if you look at like 7 billion people in the world but that doesn't mean that it excuses people for not being dangerous on demand. You have to carry the fundamental four, lethal, sharp, bright, medical. That's the fundamental four that makes you dangerous on demand. doesn't matter how rare the attacks are. It could still happen to you. The idea but that I like some- what you're doing and tracking this and, you know, disputing what they're saying and showing that it is becoming more and more frequent because you got to look at the causes as to why, you know, these, these wild animal attacks are becoming more frequent. Yeah. Well, and so if we could go down the uh, rabbit hole for a second and dad, stop me if we don't have time. Um, but if we go down a rabbit hole of why this is happening, okay. Wildfires are pushing animals into more human populated areas in California. This isn't even talking about the ones in Canada or Montana or most of the ones in Wyoming have been stupid people getting too close to animals, but specifically in California, it's wildfires that are driving the animals to the human populated areas. Well, why are those wildfires happening that are then driving the animals there? Mm-hmm. Well, I can tell you why Good question. in California. Uh, well, I don't, I mean, I don't think we should we, tell we don't, yeah, we don't have time to talk about that. They should tell us why. Just a question. They don't do anything about it. Well, there's, there's so many reasons. Uh, but the fact of the matter is this: Look, look, because Alec Baldwin, because Alec no, Baldwin, <laughs> hey, remember, Alec Baldwin is the president of the Film Actors Guild, and we're waiting for the Film Actors Guild to come out with a public statement in support of their president, uh, Alec Baldwin. But that's a different topic. Uh, my Damon, my Damon. But to, to to stay on point with the animal attack, here's the deal, kids. Animals have been attacking humans since forever 
go back to the Bible. There were animal attacks in the Bible, right? Okay, it's this is it's not new. For that, Paul, there's there's evidence even before that. Uh, well, and, I, I don't know what came before Genesis, but um, the fact is, animal. You know, this okay. isn't new. People are like, "Oh, this is terrible! I can't believe this is happening." What are you talking about? This is planet Earth. We have predatory animals on planet Earth, and the, you're the. They're like, see, on one hand, you got the hippies are like, animals are just kind and gentle, and they just want to live in peace and harmony. Those are the people that have never actually been around animals and seen animals. Um, but uh, fat kids. You being disarmed doesn't make the animal attacks not happen. You're like, well, let's not attack them because they're kind and peaceful and gentle. That's not how that works. Uh, and if you, when you listen to idiots on the Internet that tell you that you shouldn't be armed when you go out into the woods or go hiking, or if you live in a, in a state in a communist-run state where the your slave masters tell you that you're forbidden, you're not allowed, you don't have permission to be armed. Well, I guess you're going to be food. What you be thinking? There, come on now. Yes. Oh, you want us to comment on? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. Be food. You know. You, well, I mean, what, it's. It's common sense. You know, they talk about all these common sense gun laws and whatnot, but if if this is a frequent occurrence that's happening in your area where the wild animals are starting to attack your your children when you're out on your, you know, happy little nature walk and you you decide that you don't want to do anything to protect them other than try to run away or, you know, defeat the animal with your bare hands, it's just it's pure stupidity. Well, just one month ago we had a coyote attack. Oh, that's gonna that's gonna cost you your life. Why are you gonna follow a rule or a law that's that's ultimately going to result in your death? Oh, but it'll never happen. Well, and we we talk about being out in the woods. That kid, uh, there was like ring doorbell footage of a kid being drug away by a coyote in suburbia in his front lawn. Yeah. yeah. So th this is you know it's not like oh and the lady who got killed by the grizzly in Montana was in town. She was like next to the post office, and the, you know, so just carry your gun. I would like to see footage of that also because I guarantee you they had warning to get away from the bear, get inside, you know, do something other than oh look, it's a cute little bear that's in our town. Well, she was she was uh well the one in Montana, Marty. For, if you're not familiar with it, uh, uh, they they uh, there's a a bike trail that goes through there and all the, these little towns have these free camp spots in town. Mm -hmm. So as you're biking across the great wilderness, you bike into town and then like right next to the post office, there was a, a designated field for tent camping. Mm -hmm. So these, these bicyclists who are, you know, bicycle tourists pop, sure. put their tent up and at, you know, three o'clock in the morning, now, the bear had been around, and they're like, shoo, bear, go away, and it left, and then they all went to sleep, and it said, hmm, I'm still hungry, and it came back, and it pulled the lady out of her tent and crushed her skull. It actually broke her neck. When a bear reaches up and goes, oh, waka, you know, this, oh, that's yeah. what they do to deer. Like, a bear will come up and go, ba boom, and a grizzly bear will snap a mule deer's neck, bammo, and then eat it, and that's exactly what happened. So, uh, but it was in town. People were like, well, you shouldn't be in the woods where the bear live because that's not nice. And the bear lived there. You shouldn't be there. Like, well, should you be in town? Are you allowed you to said, be there? What you said earlier, the bear was there. They saw it earlier. Yeah. They, they just, they just dismissed it. Well, the, well, the, the locals, uh, and here's a, here's what's it worse is the locals said that the bear had been raiding chicken coops and stuff. So it is a known, it was a known nuisance already yeah so why didn't someone shoot this mother effer oh you can't just shoot them you you have to wait until they kill a human then after they kill a human then it's okay born in california yeah. you have to wait till they kill a human then we'll capture it and we'll do dna testing on it and we'll put it on trial <laughs> uh, that what did they capture did we find out if they actually captured that mountain lion or did nope. they kill it they no they gave up on it so it's going to kill again. It's out there. It's like, 
and around. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to kill again. Instead yeah. of letting a a hunter go out and take care of the problem. Nope. Nope. Can't do that. Can't allow that because I guarantee you there are people in California that could hunt that thing and kill it. But Oh yeah. That's mean. I guarantee there's people in Tennessee that would go to California. Done it and kill it. And, yeah. No, because what we have to do is we have to sacrifice our children on the altar of liberalism. And that's exactly what they do in California. Like liberalism says you can't kill the kitty cats because they're, you know, they're part of nature, but that part of nature wants to kill you. So we're going to let that, we're going to let that part of nature kill our children, sacrifice our children on the altar of liberalism, and then we'll act shocked and surprised and we'll want people to feel bad for us when it happens, when we could have taken care of the problem already. When somebody could have shot that mofo right then and there, I wonder what the the mountain lion population is in California. It's got to be tremendous if they're getting run over on the roads. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, if if they're, and of course, you know, I think the wildfires. Jared brought up a valid point. It has a lot to do with that, also, probably. I uh, I was just looking at the story here, and it says about to, to answer our numbers question here is is this increasing? Well, it says right here in the story about 20 confirmed attacks have occurred in California in more than a century of record keeping. All right, so that's 20 in more than a century of record keeping. Dude, there's been that we many. We had one in last September, which was the seven-year-old boy was bitten by a mountain lion, and then one just in recently. So that's two. That's 10% in one year. Rush yeah. Limbaugh did a, remember when Rush Limbaugh did a fundraiser for the children of that woman that was killed by a mountain lion in California? No. Yeah, he did. Uh, a woman, because she was, her, the, the husband reached out to, to Limbaugh and, and told him that his wife was a, a fan and a listener. And, of course, he, he put his, his power behind it to do a fundraiser for this woman's children because um, she was dead because a mountain lion killed her. And they, uh, they, in this case, it was a female mountain lion. So they, they tracked it and killed it. And the left-wing hippie liberals in California did a fundraiser for the mountain lion's kittens. Oh, wow. Because the mountain lion's kittens didn't have their mommy anymore and raised more money for the mountain lion than the dead woman's kids got. That's sad. This was 20 years ago in California. That's how bad California is. California people care more about the life of a mountain lion than the children of a woman that was killed by one well her her husband shouldn't have supported rush limbaugh maybe that wouldn't have happened well she did she actually um yeah, so she, check this out i'm at uh california.gov and wanted to find out what their mountain lion population is this is on there this is official how many mountain lions are in california Statewide mountain lion population estimates are based on the best scientific knowledge, research, and methods available. The exact number is unknown. <laughs> That's their answer. There's a lot. Well, That's if they're the if they're answer. getting run over on the on the roads, there's got to be a lot. It at least it was an honest answer. I was gonna because that was gonna be my question. It's like, well, how do you know that's the real number? Like, well, the, mountain lion, the last forty years have estimated population densities for different habitats throughout California. These density estimates have varied from zero to 10 lions per 100 square miles, then applied to the total amount of each habitat type available. Previous studies have estimated 2,000 to 3,000 mountain lions statewide. In a 1996 study, CDFW estimated 4,000 to 6,000 mountain lions statewide using density estimates from previous studies. So they haven't done a, a recent study. It looks. I got to be one here from 1972. So 40, a 1972 survey said there was four to 6,000 in the state. Yeah, same thing in the 1996 study. So it sounds to me like they're not doing any studies on it. Well, you you know you know where most of these the fish and game people get their stats, they get them they get them from hunters. Biden. You know when you're a hunter, you no, know, when you're a hunter, they I you know when I when I got my my fur bearers uh, license in Wyoming, they send you a thing and they send you a survey. They're like, hey, if you are in the in the woods in the field you know, in the mountains and you see the following, 
please let us know, right? Because they're counting on the hunters to go out and give them feedback. Well, in California, you have to, like, you know, go and sacrifice your gold to the king for the permission to do the things, you know. So how how many hunters are actually in the field in California harvesting that data and giving it back to the, the state? I don't know. But uh, we I do know that this we're, we've been almost an hour and a half. <laughs> did, it, did you have fun, Marty? I'm having fun. Are we done? Do you limit your shows? Well, yeah, yeah we actually have a time limit. I don't limit my shows. We <laughs> you, still be unlimited. I know if, if this was a, if this was a, yeah, because you just start going and like two hours into it, I got to take a piss. Yeah, you, can't, and- <laughs> you can't stop an interesting conversation. You know, you got to keep it going. You got to keep it going until everyone just goes. <sighs> That's why they can come back and pick it up where they, after their piss break. Yes. For for our people, we do four and a half hours every single week. We do an hour and a half. Actually, it's three and a half hours. I'm sorry. So, three and a half hours every single week. We do an hour and a half for the public, and then we do two hours for our grad program members. And you can get that at getsotg.com. Go there, follow the instructions, and you'll be able to join us live for the extra two hours that we will be doing today. Yes. Yes, indeed. Am I going to be on your two-hour live? Oh, you can, can be. be if you're just hanging out. I'm going to we're going to take yeah. a ten-minute break here in a second. And if you guys want to continue to hear from Marty from Talking Lead, go to getsotg.com. Join get it in the next ten minutes. Out. Yeah. If we get more than five people that want me to come back, I'll come back. Uh-huh. Yep. How many people are in Discord right now? Oh, uh, not that many. Like three or four. Oh, there you yeah, go. I don't know. They all I don't left. Know what happened? Where did you guys go? Fuckers. Where where was you at? Where was you? Not enough. Where was you at? Where you be, homie? We was coloring I, with our crayons back Maybe here. they had to go take a pee-pee break, too, because there were more earlier. Yeah. Um, okay. okay, so what we're going to do is what we just said. Marty can stay with us for the uh, for the next hours of this thing. We're going to talk about what's up your nose. Yeah. I may or I may not, but if, if I don't, you guys can <laughs> check us out, Talking Lead. Uh website talkingled.com and uh we are dropping all of our shot show interviews so we've got i don't know something over 30 interviews that we did at shot show paul was on a couple of those so uh, those will be released soon as well and uh, we've got an ak corner coming up this month stay tuned for that maybe paul will join us for that one too hey your buddy herman's gonna be on there oh no Ooh. he's you're gonna get him on the on the ak corner <laughs> Believe it or not, I am going to get it. It's going to become the AK slash everything else corner. I went to his new gun store the other day. You know, he's got a uh-huh. store yeah. and uh, checked it out. And um, I mean, the guy knows his stuff. Oh yeah, firearm right. pharmacy. He knows a lot about firearms. So if I can just, if I can just, you know, bring it in and keep it keep focused him on I'm, track. You got to keep him on you track. Can help me do that. Um, we'll get some good content. There was one person on planet Earth that could keep him on track, and he, he he's gone. Yep, that was James. So, that was James. But all right, what, what are we going to talk about on the Friday or the Thursday and Friday? We're going to talk about what's up your nose. I don't know what's up your nose. Uh, we're going to talk about destroying the. How many people have, have have you ever heard the? Oh, I you know you guys who just shoot your bullets on top of each other, you're dumb. What I do is I spread them out on the target because that's more tactically efficient. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go ahead and destroy that uh, on Thursday's episode. Friday, we're going to talk about Chinese balloons and government incompetence. Yeah, we're going to d- deep dive into that. I wanted to talk about that today. I'm yeah. Glad. Oh, there's so much. But in the meantime, remember this, kids. You're a beginner once, you're a student for life. Thanks for staying until the end. Want to water the seeds of freedom we planted together today? Head over to wherever you listen to us and leave a like, rating, or review. It makes a big difference. Have a show topic submission? We would love to hear it. Submit it to info at studentofthegun.com. A delightful human will get back to you faster than you can finish a one-box workout. Remember to check studentofthegun.com often for new and free content, giveaways, and more. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at 